This Let's next one it. is, it, once I fished it, it, it became one of my favorites. Um, I had it in my box for a long time and I didn't fish it. Um, you know, there's, there's something that goes around called like, like fly confidence, right? So you have your favorite patterns, ones that produce for you all the time. And they're ones that you fish frequently. And, and sometimes it's difficult to move out of the kind of patterns that we get into when we're fishing the same kind of patterns, especially when they're effective, you know, but I tried something new um, with this pattern and I was really, really impressed. And where it started for me with this pattern was Branson Expo a few years ago. Um, Davey Watton was there and Davey came up with this pattern and he was like, you've never heard of this? I can't, you know, it's famous all over the world. I can't believe you haven't heard of this. And it's his tailwater whitetail midge. Um, I think it's called a, a super whitetail tailwater midge or something like that. Um, but Davey Watton came up with this. Um, you, you can find the pattern online as well. And I do a couple of different variations of this pattern, but this is a size 14 scud hook that this one's on. It's a size uh, 2.4 millimeter uh, bead on the end of that. So relatively small bead. And it uses some of the same materials that we had before. Um, it's gonna use a thorax dubbing again. This time I am gonna use the bright SLF prism in the peacock color. Uh, of course, that white tail, you probably already guessed, um, kind of where I got my idea for the variation on that hair's ear. It's gonna be a piece of marabou. Don't use your good marabou, use the really trashy marabou because we're gonna be ripping it off the sides. Then for the, the black body of the fly, you can use black UTC 70, or you can, uh, if you have Spanflex laying around, you can use Spanflex. This is something that we use for uh, legging material on like Pat's rubber legs a lot of times, um, but it also makes a really good body for midges. And then we're also going to put on, on this one, we're gonna put some holographic silver flashaboo. And then we're gonna counter wrap with that medium fine Danvilles. So this one's gonna be the Watton Super Whitetail Tailwater Midge or something like that. You'll be able to find it if you search for that. So I'm going to pop this one out of the vise and I'll pop a fresh size 14 scud hook in there. There we go. All right. I know when I was, I was sending material lists out, Greg was curious about threads. And I'm usually not too specific about my thread um, unless I'm tying small midges. And then I do have one that I like above all others. Um, as you can see, I'm just about out of this one, but it lasts nearly forever. This is a Simperfly Nano Silk. And I believe this is the 30D. Um, so it's a really small diameter gel spun polymer thread. Now I know that's a lot of jargon, but essentially what that means, gel, gel spun polymer um, usually we're using GSP in diameters like 100 or 200 for really big flies where we're doing deer hair work and we're, we're putting a ton of pressure um, on those flies so that we can splay out a bunch of deer hair, right? And then we carve that deer hair uh, to the correct um, shape. But when you take a product like gel spun polymer and you put it in this very thin diameter, what you get is an excellent, excellent thread, not only for midges, but also for dry flies, because this stuff doesn't build up on your hook at all. I mean, you can, you can wrap and wrap and wrap with this stuff and it doesn't build up at all. And it's super, super strong. I mean, you got to put a ton of force into it to get it to break. So Simperfly Nano Silk is what this is called. And I believe it's the 30D size. So it's one of their smallest sizes. And I, it's not cheap. It lasts forever, but I think it's 5 or $6 a, a spool. It's kind of pricey. But for midges and dry flies, it's just about the best thing you can get. So we're just going to we're gonna start on here. Now, this silver bead up front is tungsten, so don't need to add any lead here. If you wanted to add like 0 0.10 or 0.15, lead behind that head to add even more weight to it you could 
Um, also would help just with the tapering of the fly um, with locking in the bead, but I'm just gonna build up a little bit of a thread dam behind the head here. Just gonna wrap in a little bit of thread dam. You can see this nano silk just goes forever. You can put in how many wraps I've put on this stuff um, on this shank already and it's just not building up at all. So that's really cool. It gives you a lot of control over it. I mean, you can build up a, a bit of a body if you want to, um, but you can keep the fly really light, really thin if you want to as well. So about the middle point of the fly is where I'm gonna start tying in that um, marabou tail. Like I said, use your worst marabou you can find. Um, we don't need to use the good stuff for this. I'm just gonna pull about, I don't know, a quarter inch of plumes off of there. Just peel them right off. I've got the butts in my hand now. There's the fronts. There's that tail end. Now that is, is kind of a mess and it's almost the size of our fly, right? So I am gonna clip, clip that out. I'll try to get this on camera. Just do a little clip out to get a nice tie in point. Just put that right on the fly. Now we wanna kind of put this in the body of the fly so that we can add a little bit of thickness to the fly as we go. Just consecutive wraps. I'm controlling, I'm pinching and, and turning that marabou towards me to control it. Once I have it locked back to where I want it, I'm just gonna do wraps back up to the front. I'm just kind of covering up some of the, now we got this big long tail, we'll deal with that later. Might pinch off a little bit of that just to get it a little bit shorter for working length. Now, the last thing that we're gonna wrap up in this pattern is the silver wire. So of course, that's the first thing we're gonna tie in. So remember we have that silver wire. Again, it doesn't have to be silver. It, it could be red, you know, do an accent color on it. It, it doesn't It doesn't matter. Um, with these midges like this, you know, a, a lot of times they, they can key in on a color, I think, but I think they're keying in on a main color. I don't necessarily think they're keying in on, on like a ribbing color, but um, if you wanna do different colors, experiment with that. This one is, uh, like I said, that silver medium fine size, which is the kind of like the brassy size. And UTC. We get that wrapped in. Good to go. Now we're going to wrap in that holographic silver flashaboo. That's going to be kind of our contrasting and flash color. I'm sticking all of these on my side. I have to do a little trap wrap on that guy. There we go. Got a hold of him. I'm just wrapping it all the way to the back, way down into the bend of this scud hook. Okay, we're going all the way to where our vice jaws grip that, all the way down. Want plenty of room on this body. Now, the last thing that you're going to tie in is if you have a, a, a black thread, you can just build up a body here. Just build up a body and then wrap up um, as we go. If you have the span flex, you're going to go ahead and tie that in. Again, doesn't matter whichever one you want to use. But I will say, if you use the span flex, try to get it on the side of the fly, just like this. Try to get it on the side of the fly. Keep it on the side of the fly. I'm pulling backwards on it, like pulling away from the fly towards me to put pressure on it. And I'm wrapping all the way back to where those other materials were. All right, now we're just going to wrap our span flex forward. Now, if you wrap this span flex forward, and man, that's a tongue twister. If you wrap this span flex forward and you, uh, you don't put pressure on it, you're gonna get, it's gonna be really loose and it's gonna swallow your subsequent material wraps. So when you wrap this material, if you have span flex, keep it pretty tight. Keep some pressure on it. And just work your way up the fly. You want these wraps to be concentric, touching. Just wrapping it up the fly. I know it's tough to see on camera when it shifts focus, but 
just wrapping the span flex up the fly. Nice and tight. Now remember, we are gonna put a thorax color on here, so we don't necessarily need to go all the way up. You can leave just a little bit of space. So what I'm gonna do is keep that span flex tight, and then I'm gonna put trap wraps over it. One, two, and then do one, two, three, four in front. Then I'm gonna turn my fly so I can get to the bottom of it and clip it out really close. These are some super duper fine point scissors, um, like an ultra fine scissor that Loon makes. That's pretty, they're pretty cool. Uh, if you can find like really, really fine point scissors, it's nice for when you're working with midges or um, dry flies. You can get in there a little bit closer, I think, and really put a, put a nice close cut on, you know, the materials that you want to clip out of there. All right, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna put a wet finish in there so I can get my thread out of the way. Now we've got two more materials to wrap up. Now we're gonna wrap up the holographic flash, but we're not gonna do it with touching wraps. We're just gonna get those wraps close to one another. If you bump it, just come back to where you were. There we go. So we have close wraps there, but they're not touching. Another trap wrap on here, just cinch in that material. And then clip out your extra. All right. Now you could call it good right there, but what I have found with this pattern, and, and honestly, with the one that uh, Davey Watton gave me, I think, you know, he's guide tying these. He's trying to get them out as quick as he possibly can. He does not counter wrap it with the wire. I do counter wrap it with the wire. And the reason that I do that is because I've found that as soon as fish teeth get into that holographic flashaboo, it's done. It, it, as soon as they nick one of those, it all comes undone. Now, what you could do to avoid that is you could put a little bit of like head cement on it, like a Z-Mint or a UV resin. But also what will work really well is if you just counter wrap it with wire. I'm just going to come through, do wire counter wraps. Once I get up to the front, trap it in and get ready to put in my thorax of that SLF prism dubbing in that peacock color. So I'm going to hold it out to the side, hold on to the side of the fly, helicopter it off. Just like that. All right. This guy's almost done. So I've got this prism dubbing. Mean, you can see it a little bit better on camera now. It's got a ton of flash in it. For your thorax on here, you don't need nearly as much as we used with the last fly. I mean, you're just, I think I saw or heard somebody say one time when they were teaching how much dubbing to use is just getting your thread dirty. Just enough to get your thread dirty. Bear with me, it's kind of tough with this with the camera. All right, move that noodle up nice and close. And then we're just gonna dub in a, a small thorax here. Just like that. And that is it on that Watton Whitetail Midge. Love that nano silk. You can do a ton of wraps in there. You can pull on it. Look how it's flexing the hook. You can pull on that stuff and it doesn't break on you. Now on my um, pattern that I showed you, I had a hot spot on it, right? So what I do is I come back in with that six ot and just do a few wraps in there of that six ot in that blaze orange color. Clip it out. And then I'll do a whip finish on it. That was six turns. All right. Pull that out of there. 
And that's it. Pop on just a little bit of head cement. Good to go. That is super effective. Now we've got this big long tail back here. We want the tail to be uh, almost roughly the size of the fly itself, but it's it's much easier to handle it if you take it out. And you just grab onto your tail and just kind of pull it off there to whatever size you want. There you go. Nice bright hot spot on there. It's going to be really resilient um, because you've counter wrapped it with that wire. Uh, that's a deadly, deadly little midge. It's got some good movement in the water. Uh, I think it's a nice attractor and it's got all those kind of classic um, parts into it. It's got a nice thorax built onto it. It's got that black and white zebra midge color that's, that's um, so effective. So yeah, those are the two patterns I had for you this evening. What questions do we have on that one? Well, Sam, I had a question about on, on your pheasant tail. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever put legs on, the, you know, like a traditional pheasant tail? Or do you think it's worth the time or not? Mm, I'll be honest with you. Like, if somebody asks me to, if I'm tying for someone, I will. If I'm tying for myself, I don't. Okay. Um, I just don't. They're, they're so fragile, the tips of the pheasant tail. And I don't know that it adds enough to be worth the hassle of trying to separate them over the top of the hook and then pull them backwards and then put a wrap over them and get them like even on both sides. It's always well, just me, been a bit of a hassle for me. So I've just left them off, but. Well, I take, I take a Brahma hen feather and I, I cut down a little bit from the tip and pull it back and make yeah. that V and put that V in there. And then you got both sides and, you get them exactly what size you want and they're absolutely okay. i know exactly what you mean um i've done that uh many times when i've tied pheasant tails in the past looking for some of my hen here we go um what john is talking about is a really really great idea uh you get a patch of hen saddle like this this is um Let's see here. This is a soft hackle hen saddle patch. That's what you're talking about, right, John? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And this is a speckled brown. And peel off one of your lower sections. What he's talking about, about when putting legs on this is that you can take a, a feather like this and then clip out the tip. And you're left with this V, right? See that? And what you'll do is you'll pull back the remaining fibers until you have something that looks akin to this. This is what you're talking about, right, John? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what you'll do is you'll take that and you'll put it over the fly and essentially you'll hold back these two parts of the V and then you'll put a wrap over that. And what you'll be end up with is legs sticking off the back of the fly. Now that's not going to focus real well for you, but you'll get little legs sticking off the back of the fly like this. And so that's a great way to create those legs and not have to deal with the really um, fragile tips of the pheasant tail or deal with trying to separate pheasant tail or judge length too. Sometimes that's difficult. With this one, you can adjust your length. You can go further in, you can go further out and you can adjust the length of the legs. So yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. That's a really good well, suggestion. What I, was, what I was doing on the pheasant tail, I would tie it in in the butt, go all the way to the forward, then try to use those tips, you know, come back. Well, you're dealing with, like you say, fragile tips. And then if your length is not exactly right, they're too long or too short. With the Brahma hen or the hen saddle, you can adjust it however you want it. You know? mm -hmm. Exactly. And another thing is that I use, um, now some people use a different uh, tailing material. Let me pop this back in so we can talk about it a little bit more. Some people use a different tailing material. I use the pheasant tail tips for the tail. And I just let, I just let them hang out out back. Uh, yeah, you could switch out. You could switch that out for like a, a CDL, um, Coke de Leon. A lot of people do that. Um, you could use like hackle, stiff, really stiff hackle fibers. You need something that's stiff. Kind of see how the resistance that has, because otherwise it's gonna it's gonna mat up. It's gonna foul around your hook. 
So you do want something that's pretty stiff. Yeah, great suggestion. Anything else? On the whitetail mitts you just tied a minute ago, putting the tinsel on there, I've never seen that before. I've seen T-Bird tie for Davy before, and she always just used the wire. Of course, she just used thread, too. What is the advantage of using the tinsel or uh, on it? None that I've seen. And when I've watched T-Bird's videos, you're absolutely right. She's a, uh, whoop, there goes my, sorry, there goes my iPad. Um, she's using, she's just doing it as simply as possible, thread and wire. And that's it. That's all you really, that's all you really need on there. Um, the advantage of using the tinsel, I don't know that there is one. Um, just the one that, the fly that Davey gave me had the tinsel wrap on it. And so that's the way I've tied it. Um, but I don't think you'd have to. And in fact, that brings me to a variation on the pattern. This one has the pearl or opal medium mirage tinsel as the base. And then it's counter wrapped with the UTC wire in BR in black. So you get uh, essentially the same look, but uh, it's, it's a little bit more resilient and has just a little bit more flash. So instead of using uh, the flashaboo, um, like you were saying, you could just use you could just use the thread and the wire, um, but you may not get as uh, bright of a flash. If you want a really flashy body, you can use that opal mirage as the body, and then come back with the brassy black wire. So these are the two things that I used for uh, this variant. Mirage tinsel and medium opal and ultra wire in that brassy size. Very good. But everything else, everything else the same on that. Yeah, Davies, Davies swore by this one. He was telling me that he uses, oftentimes uses this one as a dropper fly and then had a, um, a soft hackle wet fly as kind of his um, lead fly on the rig and that he sometimes ran two or three flies on the on the white when he was, I guess he's drift fishing with them. But yeah, really interesting talking to him about that. And I've found this to be a really effective pattern. And like I said, I tie it with the tungsten head. Um, so it drops a little faster and I'll put it under, um, under like a little, uh, I can show you. Couple different options for the other fly in the two fly rig. This is kind of like the one that we did last time, last year. That soft tackle hair's ear, or, or sometimes called a guide's choice hair's ear. But oftentimes, if I want to drop it really fast, Put that on there as your front fly, Pat's rubber leg. This is a, a five and a half millimeter tungsten bead head. And that thing drops like a bag of rocks um, in heavy water. And that's that span flex for the legs. And other than that, it's just chenille. And so then off the back of here, you got to do like 18 to 24 inches of, you know, I don't know, four or five X, whatever you want to do off the back of there. And then drop that midge off the back of there. And then... One other one that I really like to use and uses uh, another kind of unique material. is another stone fly. See, that's not the one, this is it. This is a stone fly, kind of a pattern that I, I mishmashed up, um, but it uses the span flex legs. It's got that holographic back and it uses a tungsten um, stone fly head from Flyman. So I'll use that as my point fly or my lead fly and then put a dropper off the back of that in the little midge. If you're wanting to drop your rig down really quick. <laughs> 